Mmm. Hey. Hey, good morning. It's the beginning of a new vlog. What do you mean? <laughs> um, before we get started, let's get something out of the way. I got a little herpes situation going on. So let me just apply my lanolab real quick. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't stop filming because of it. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Let's use a different finger for the rest of my mouth. Um, but yesterday we hit 15,000 subscribers. Okay? We hit 15,000 subscribers yesterday and I'm thinking, listen, Farakot, can we double this or even get to 50K at the end of the year? I really would love that. I really would love that. I'm praying about it. Please pray about it, okay? Thank you to you guys for uh, getting us to 15,000 subscribers. Um, I do want to do a little giveaway. Not a huge giveaway, a little giveaway. And it's going to be for my book community members because I've given away makeup before. I've done this and this. I would like to do a lunch with somebody because, but because... Because of the life that we are in right now, because because of the Rona, the Vade, I can't quite do that as yet. So, um, I I really want to give some books away. Not my personal books. I'll buy books, okay? And um, that will obviously be to the smaller members of the Just Got Little community who actually watch my book videos. I know that my book videos aren't the highest viewed videos, but I do those videos because it's a passion of mine. I really enjoy reading, and I know that there are people out there who enjoy it too. So the 15K giveaway is going to be specifically for the book members of the community, but I'll discuss that probably on my Instagram or something like that. Or the community tab. That's not why we're here. We are here because it is the beginning of another vlog. And I'll be leaving the house today. This will be the first time in a week that I'll be leaving the house. I am tired of sitting in the house. I am tired of cabin fever. I don't know if I'm going to take my camera with me. I might vlog while I'm in the car. I might vlog while I'm in the car because there are questions that, why am I here? Why am I here? Um, so I don't know if I will be taking my camera with me. I might take it with me and then leave it in the car because I really am not quite comfortable with uh, vlogging with uh, my camera while I'm out and about. However, I will take some clips with my phone. I've got a pretty good phone and with a pretty good camera. So I'll oh, just... Take this and use this. Makes it makes it a little bit easier when I'm carrying something like this and I'm vlogging, right? So hopefully it won't be as shaky. The reason why this vlog is happening today is because I'm sick and tired of these comments that I get. I get comments like, you don't eat junk food every single time you put up... Um, uh, videos of what I eat in a day or whatever. You, you're not eating junk food, you're eating healthy, you're eating clean. So... Because I've had a rather rough week, it is Sunday today, I feel like today is the last day if I want to start something, eat junk food, then get back to my normal routine tomorrow. So, today I'm going to eat junk food all day. I'm going to show you guys that I just don't vlog the days that I order pizza or I have a burger or I have whatever. I just don't vlog those days. It's quite windy. I forgot to mention that Cyclone Eloise, wow. Wow, I am praying for all the people in Mozambique, in Beira, in Limpopo, KZN. I really, the damage has been crazy. Man, and I'm just, yeah, our weather, we're in Joburg. I don't think it'll affect us that much. However, the weather is quite cloudy and windy. And I'm pretty sure it's because of uh, Usista Eloise. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I am going to leave the house I'm just going to mosey around. I'm not planning on buying anything. Oh, I'm going to go to exclusive books for the giveaway. Look around first. I'll decide probably in the next couple of days. And then probably have lunch somewhere. Brunch at Woolies Cafe. But I will have something unhealthy-ish. Do they have anything unhealthy-ish at Woolies Cafe? But that's the one place where I feel comfortable to just sit and have a quick meal by myself and then leave. Yeah, it's going to be a one-day vlog. We're going to be together all day. And this is the one day that I'm actually not wearing black. How do you like it? I'm not wearing black. Why, why is this piece sticking out? It's quite disrespectful, really. And I cut my hair. I'm not wearing black. Let me show you. I'm not wearing black. 
I'm wearing gray, honey, gray. I'm wearing gray. It's just, this is a gray dress that I got years ago at Cotton On, I think. And we love her. You guys will be keeping me company today because I'll be answering your questions that you put on the community tab and on my Instagram questions block thing um, where I said I'll be answering questions as I eat. So I'm going to be doing that. We're going to be chatting, answering questions for 15K. Thank you very, very much. As you can see, see, the dress is gray and not black. Can I have a round of applause? I mean, and I always wear something. I like to look very casual, chic, nyana, so. Yeah, but I don't know. Is it chic? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go now. And I'll probably start answering the first couple of questions in the car while I'm driving before I get onto the freeway. And then, yeah, I'll then switch to my phone from there. It is quite cloudy. It is quite windy. Cyclone Eloise, man, she's not playing. It's so sad, it's so sad. The images and the videos and everything that was coming out onto the media whew, had me like on the brink of tears. Like as if we don't already have enough to deal with. Hey cat. Uh, Z says, hey cat, I just want to check on how your relationship is with your neighbors. I'm trying to fit into the suburb life and I'm finding that everybody here minding their own business uh, and even fear saying hello because maybe we have a, we have a super, how do you cope? Um, I'm quite good friends with my neighbors. I mean, I live in a complex, so it's a complex of only 20 units and um, I get along with my neighbors quite well. There's, of course, the neighbors. Oh, I could have a story time about the neighbor that I told off, okay? Because she went off at my sister and I was just like, Bish! Well, we're not finna do, okay? Um, but the ones that are right next door to me, opposite me, right next door, on my left and my right, we get along quite well. In fact, um, the reality of suburb life ne, is that you're not gonna greet your neighbors every time you see them except the ones that you eventually over time are going to get to know um greeting there's no harm in it if they see you coming into your car or coming into your yard or whatever and then one is driving past or whatever it's like oh hi how are you finish go in um it's not a very black thing like that's a fact it's not a very black thing but um we want to go to yo yes i'm gonna sugar hey in color in we want to do that but it's 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 just town life it's just drop on life it's just suburb life you get used to it for me it wasn't even so bad because i'm an introvert and i keep to myself a lot of the time it's actually my neighbors that say to me are you okay we hardly see you blah 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 and i'm just like yeah i'm good we just know that you're you're good because your windows will be open and blah 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 and i'm like yeah i know i know okay so the next question was are you interested in being married or is it something that you're comfortable without i'm assuming the person who asked me this question didn't watch my marriage video <laughs> my real talk Let's talk about it. Uh, Candid with Cat uh, marriage video, which I'll link down below. Um, okay, now I need the aircon. It's actually quite hot in here. Um, I'm quite comfortable with or without it. I don't have issues with marriage or being married or whatever. Uh, but it doesn't, a marriage, like I say in that video, marriage will in no way define me or validate me as a human being or, you know, make my purpose in life fulfilled. Um, I'd ne I would never give any one person or one ideology that satisfaction that, oh my God, now that I'm married, I've achieved. It's ridiculous. Come on. Um, I do, however, know that there are, there's a tendency for married groups of people to kind of stick together and, oh, the married, what, what, married women's clubs or married mom's clubs, I feel like that is so isolating for women like myself um, because you'll never find a single woman like myself who isn't married, I might be in a relationship, but I'm not married, uh, 
being snarks to my married friend and being like, oh, well, you're married now, so <laughs> bye. You know, I, I wouldn't do that to my married friend. Oh, it's Sunday today. That's why the roads are so empty. That's why I'm driving. I'm 90, so uh, I wouldn't do that to my married friend. In fact, one of my married friends was at my place last week because she had to work from my place because she had no power in her house and I got fiber and stuff. So she came by and we were chilling all day and laughing and catching up and whatever. We grew up together. But what I've noticed that a lot of married women especially uh, tend to be quite... They tend to quite... They tend to uh, sometimes unknowingly and indirectly, indirectly, indirectly um, ostracize and isolate single women who are around the same age group as them. Like, oh, you can't sit with us. Bye. So there's that kind of like mean girl club when it comes to... Uh, um, uh, women who are married it's, Look, it doesn't do anything for me It doesn't change the price of bread I, I don't care at them But um, With my very few friends uh, Two of whom are married And then the others aren't uh, we pray, We're quite cool I'm, Hi Katleo Hi Katleo, I would love for you to touch base On being a late 20s YouTuber Influencer <laughs> Late 20s, I'm not even in my 20s Baby girl Um don't know that's not really something i think about i do i did at some point think that it's quite unfortunate and i had this chat with tato fox that um it might be also an age thing it really might be but hey not everybody enjoys the same content and whatever that's why we continue to do what we do but i noticed that the quite unfortunate thing with the whole age thing and whatever is that a lot of um uh, a lot of brand work and influencer work and whatever is often given to young influencers and i have a problem with this i just feel like it makes our work being an older influencer who loves what i do uh, a little bit more difficult i feel like i'm screaming now because i've stopped i'm at a robot uh, it makes our work a little bit different and it kind of sucks because you you love what you do but it would be even nicer to do what you do. Um, oh my God, my, my camera almost fell. You love what you do, but it would be even nicer to do what you do and get paid for it, you know? Um, especially when you know that your content is fucking fire, like mine is. Um, so it, it gets really hard. I work like, really hard. I work really hard with my Instagram content, with my YouTube content. I thrive and pride myself on uh, quality content, well taken Instagram pictures, shots, blah, blah, blah. And oh, I'm driving into the parkade. Well taken Instagram shots and you might not see me but you're gonna hear me and I'll probably once I get in here switch to my camera and then speak to you guys again a little bit later but uh, let's see. it's it's it's, it's kind of really really difficult you know because you want you want to be noticed you want the people to see you but if they don't they just don't and yeah that's the psyche part but anyway, uh, while I park, I will touch base with you guys a little bit later where we will chat. In the meantime, you guys are going to get... Oh, nice. Right next to the light. You guys are going to get a little montage of me in the mall. So, um, enjoy the music. Enjoy the music. Enjoy uh, the vibe. Enjoy the people. Enjoy the dance. I'll try and montage it as much as I can. I always put my card in my purse because if I don't, I'm 10,000% bound to lose it.
Oh, hey, back in the house, a little bit of an incident here. I was drinking my sparkling water, and then the water did its things. Gonna show you what I got. It's not really a haul. We're gonna chat, gonna show you, blah, blah, blah. Um, while I probably look for another question, another question. Uh, some of these are questions that I've answered multiple times before in previous Q and A's and previous videos. So I'm not gonna, this thing is frustrating me, my God. So I'm not gonna answer them again. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not. Um, <laughs> Black Onyx asked me, have you seen Brigerton? Bridgerton? Bridgerton, what are your thoughts, especially on the Duke? Duke of Hastings! <laughs> this thing is so sweet. I feel like I need to get another drink from Starbucks because this caramel... Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm. I, I'm it's still like here and I don't think I'm going to finish it. Oof, I can't even. Right. First thing right. that I got, Oros. Because I grew up on Oros. It's like a staple. Sometimes I want something sweet to drink, but I don't want um, soda. I don't want a con drink. So I often go with the Oros. And then I did get a con drink. One con drink that I do like is Coke. I really enjoy it. So I, get, I got a small one, just in case, just in case. And then I did say yesterday, somewhere in my tweets that I'm craving a donut. I am not going to finish these. I'm probably going to take one. And even with the one, I think I might not even finish the whole thing. I'll probably have these later. And then I got chips. Because <laughs> that's how I roll. <laughs> I got chips. This is another snack that I don't... It's junk. I don't indulge in it often. But when I do, I do. I really, really do. Um, that was it from Pick and Pay. I keep buying these. If I could tell you, I probably have, with Pick and Pay and Woolies together, these recyclable. <sighs> Lastly, oh, then, then I went into clicks because I wanted face towels. Now, a lot of the time, these are really nice colors. There's four of these in here. Can you see these? These are face cloths. And I went to exclusive books. <laughs> I went into exclusive books. And for the first time in my life, I had, I think, four vouchers at exclusive books. And I wasn't away until I paid. For the first time in my life, I was at exclusive books and I paid 30 rand for two books. And I was really, really like, yes, but what do you mean? Uh, the first one wa is we crossed a bridge we crossed the bridge. I hate these tags. Oh, it's gonna come off. Ah! I tried it. I tried it. Look at that. I tried it. Hate these tags. Uh, we crossed a bridge and it trembled. And these are stories. Um, this is a nonfiction book by Wendy Perlman, and it's essentially uh, essays from people who are living in Syria and given with what's going on in Syria at the time. Um, you know, the people who were just constantly uh, were fighting for the country, fighting for uh, democracy, freedom, dignity. And these are their stories in the form of essays. Really, really intrigued with this. I really want to start reading more nonfiction books this year. I'm actively trying. The next one that I do want to read is the Jay Shetty one because Chetty, because I feel like for the beginning of the year, it's a great book to read. Think Like a Monk, I think. Yes. Um, so, yeah, it's a collection of intimate testimonies and poetic fragments that chronicle the conflict from its origins to present horror solely through the words of ordinary people transformed by its unfolding, essentially. That's what... Excuse me, that one is. So this one is one that I've heard a lot about, and it's called Where the Crawdads Sing. It looks like that. That cover is beautiful. If you ask me, it's stunning. So it's basically about this girl who grew up in the marshlands of this town called uh, Barkley Cove, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. She basically grew up there in the marshlands and um, 
so kind of like a like a wild girl kind of thing but then when a young man chase andrews is found dead they automatically assume that she might be linked to this death only to find that she's actually quite a very smart intelligent well-rounded um young woman who has lived there for years and she's lived there alone and yeah when the time comes she yearns to be loved when two men from town become intrigued by her wild beauty, Kaya, her name is Kaya, Kaya uh, opens up herself to a new life and then the unthinkable happens. So really, really excited to read about this. Heard about it from quite a number of booktubers that I follow on here. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. The whole idea was to just go out, get out of the house. Now on to Bridgerton. <laughs> Bridgerton was one of the Netflix shows that I jumped onto. A few days after it popped up onto Netflix and then everybody started talking about it. They were like, oh, Bridgerton, this, this. Oh, my God, the Duke of Hastings, Reggae, Jean-Pierre. What is his name? What is his name? Reggae? 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 Whatever. And I was like, okay, let me watch it. Firstly, my favorite, favorite character is the Duchess of Danbury. I think it's a Danbury. The Black Lady. Oh, my God. I love her. Her and the Queen. I love them. It's not Daphne, it's not the Duke. I don't care for all those people. Listen, the Duchess of Danbury, I think, and, and the Queen, I absolutely love. I think it is a brilliant series. It's so, I mean, but it's Shondaland. It's Shonda. I mean, and if you've been following this channel for years and years, you will know how much I love uh, uh, Grey's Anatomy. I quite enjoyed How to Get Away with Murder. Like, Shonda, Scandal, Shonda. Mm, I'm a fan and um, I read her book The Year of the Yes The Year of Yes or something like that I'll put it here loved it as well so I'm just she's those phenomenal women that I feel like she's just great and I love her and I follow everything about her or what she creates on the TV screens um, it's lovely I love the I don't know about representation so much i mean there's the duke and then there's the duchess but there isn't much of black representation in it which is fine maybe it's the time the 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 the, the, the you know they're trying to mesh into the, the the then times it's fine it's not really a big deal but i love that it has um what's this also repre representation of um um gays homosexuality and all of that that was that was nice to see the that artist guy that was also nice to see uh it's okay like i really enjoyed it it was entertaining nothing for me to write home about to be honest it isn't nothing for me to write home about the duke of hastings cute that's all i have to say about him he's cute he's really not my kind of guy he's not my type of guy oh oh oh, oh nice man um, he's got that pretty boy school look, nyana, whatever, and it's not my kind of man, that one. But pretty boy, what do I, mm -mm. And her foot is too light. Light in complexion. I find it was okay. It was just okay. It was just okay. Lady whistle down. Gay, basically. King, king. She's the shwashwi of that whole area. And we kind of love her. Uh, one of the questions that I did get was, what are my current Netflix faves? And because I've got Netflix on my phone as well, I often watch it. I was watching, uh, there it is. There it is. Let me, let me. The Office is number one because I absolutely love it. And then right next to The Office is uh, Bridgerton, which I did watch and I did finish. Um, the Haunting of Hill House is a love if you're somebody who likes horror thriller like jump scares and whatever it is quite jump scary wow there's a lot but also just the cinematography of how it's shot as well um but that one is a little bit more frightening than the haunting of bly manor which is a little bit more easier for just in case you just don't like horror, 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 and you're like, nah, I don't want to watch. Maybe you can try Bly Manor because Hill House is, is quite frightening. It's quite frightening. Um, next up, 
Bojack Horseman, love it. If you're somebody who likes animation and you like dark humor, dark comedy, uh, sarcasm on 1000, then I definitely suggest Family Guy in terms of animation. Family Guy, Bojack Horseman, uh, is it Hoops? What's the other one? Close Enough is also quite good. I love watching animation because it just reminds me of the childlike thing in me. I love it. I love it. Oh, look at that. Which one should I have? Oh, there's the pe peppermint one. There's peppermint, salted caramel filled, and New York cheesecake. Because I had a caramel macchiato, let's jump the, the caramel. New York cheesecake? I don't know. Here it is. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. <laughs> Let me get my water. Hang on. I'm not used to eating things this sweet anymore, so it's probably going to be a bite, and then I'll, I'll be done with it. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, it's good. I should have just gotten the glazed ones, because I like those ones. These are... <laughs> these are a lot. This is the cheesecake one. Mm -mm. What is this? Salted caramel filled. New York cheesecake. Mm. It's the salted caramel one. It's okay for now. That's so sweet. I, I just... How do people eat these? So I just got a moment to sit down. I want to just spend about half an hour planning things for this coming week. I got, a, I got a lot of stuff I need to plan. Um, but I'm going to answer some questions. and <laughs> Because I can't. Just two bites into that donut. I'm like, it's, they're just far too sweet. Even the just originally glazed one is really hard for me to get through. So I'm trying, guys. Uh, top 10 for you in a potential partner. And top 10 deal breakers. Yo, that's a lot. 10 yeah, you're quite lenient. I mean, me, me, I just need three things that will probably be a deal breaker. But for what I look for, obviously, there's, there's, there's a lot more. Um, I focus a lot on looks. <laughs> I need to be able, I don't focus a lot on it, but looks bring, bring, bring something to the table. I'm not going to sit here and lie and be like, ah, nah, as long as she's uh, uh, ambitious, uh, uh, determined, no. No, I still want to be able to look at you and go, mm, mm, mm. yes, yes, come here. You like it to be on my arm. Come here, come here. <laughs> so looks are important for me. Uh, th these are things that I look out for. Looks, ambition. Uh, ambition. How ambitious are you about your life? What do you want to achieve in life? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to be by the time you reach 40, 50? How much do you want to have achieved? You know, uh, ambition is very, very, very big on me. What's your relationship with God? You don't have to be big, big, big on God, like whatever, but are you Christian? First, are you God-fearing? Second, like all those things. Um, fourth, what's your relationship with your family? Now, these are things that I take very seriously when I go into a relationship because these are things that mean a lot to me in my life, just as an individual, my family, my relationship with God, um, my faith, you know, uh, my drive, my determination, what I want to achieve for my life by the time I get to 40. Right now I am reading, it's taking me quite a while to get through this book and it's only got like 270 pages, but I'm reading Love and Color by Bolu Babalola. These are mythical tales from around the world uh, that make you, that are expressions of love. That, you know, if you're not a romantic, like a chick flick, chick lit, chick romantic, romantic, like hot, steamy, what, what, but you would like to read stories about love, this is a collection of stories, mythical tales from all around the world that celebrate love. And they're so nice. They're so nice. This book is so detailed it's it's character driven it's very atmospheric uh the stories are quite short i think the story is about like 20 pages per story 25 maybe um but they're quite enjoyable there's a lot of detail in them um each of them are from the perspective of the women which i love 
uh, and and but they celebrate femininity and masculinity, especially in love. I mean, so one of the women is like she's a queen, and she she falls in love with this hunter, and even though like she is of higher ranking. But you 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 get to see how soft she is when she's around him. So she celebrates her femininity without it being de, you know, without it looking like it's submission or it's it's just it's great. It's great. It's Why urasa? So Mamelang. Mamelang. <laughs> That time I'm sure Bono ngwana ba thubile o batla laptop ka koloing ke sona. E kae? Le se le bala mampen. O se ka itshwara hlo. O tse ba fela hore petroli le ngwana e. I changed the angle a little bit, but it should be okay. If it doesn't work, I'm so sorry. Uh, the lighting is upstairs and, honey, I could not be bothered. I'm not even gonna lie. Um, so I love steers. Am I the only one who loves steers? I, I'm about steers, okay? Because the burgers are juicy, the, beef, the patty is beefy, and feels and tastes like real meat and not processed stuff. So, yeah, and I love the sauces as well and all of that jazz. So, we're sitting here. I told you guys, Coke is Coke's my jam, Coke's my life. I'm doing this purely because you guys don't believe that I eat junk food. And here we are, eating junk food, okay? Okay. We're going to continue with the questions. <sighs> Yo. The gypsy today. I eat that shit. I did. I did. Okay. I'm gonna go through the questions that I didn't get to. Um. Oh my God. Great question. The first question is how do you deal? How to deal with um? What? How to deal with and address the pressure you get from family to be a mom and wife after turning twenty-five? You just ignore. Because you know what the thing is, ne? at the end of the day, oh, I forgot to tell you guys, I don't quite like tomato in a burger. So, you know what the thing is with that? At the end of the day, ne? your family members and those people are not you. And they're pressuring you and they forget that you're going to have to deal with the expenses of this child, of bringing a, another human being into the world and actually taking care of this person 24-7. So if you think about it that way in the sense of good, hey, they can push me all they like, but this child and this responsibility is going to be on me for the rest of my life. Trust me. It's a very quick way to shut them down and tell them that financially I'm not ready. If you're not ready or if you don't want them, you don't have to tell them because then they might think, Guguti, I'll go sharp. But, but I'm telling you, I feel like if you see it that way, mm -hmm. I'll just tell them. I mean, mm, mm, mm. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I just tell them, I mean, I feel like if you're honest with your parents, more especially your parents or your mom, if it's people from outside your immediate family that are busy on your case about having a child, bye, 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 who are they? To have so much impact over the decision that you make, whether it be about a child, a husband, or whatever. But if it's your mom, for instance, pressuring you, sit down with your mother. 
and tell your mother that I don't like this. I'm not ready for it. And in color, ni she and pants, she and pants. Leave me alone. Please talk about polygamous relationships. I am currently in a polygamous relationship. Girl, you are stronger than I ever will be. Your emotional strength, I feel, is much bigger than mine ever will be. I could never be in a polygamous relationship. And personally, I feel each to their own. If you want to be in a polygamous relationship, why not do it? If you don't like it, why not? Don't do it. But what we're not going to do is judge people based on the decisions that they make. So I'm not quite sure the girl who said this, whether she um, is okay with being in a polygamous relationship, whether she just wants to hear my opinions. Me, I'm not for it. I'm not about it. Polygamy, the polyamorous relationships, all of that, I'm not for it. It's not my vibes, not my life, not my style. Uh, because I just feel like one can alimon. One, I'm very jealous when it comes to a relationship. Honestly, no. I'm jealous. I don't like the whole idea that my partner is even looking at pictures of other women. How am I going to deal knowing her, me on Monday? She is Tuesday. The other one is Wednesday. The other one is Thursday. I don't know how people who can do it do it, but I salute them. Women who can do it, but I salute them. And I personally also feel like women should also be able to marry multiple men. I'm not about patriarchal societies. I'm not about it at all. I feel like women should also be able to marry multiple men. Bakatabi saying... And maybe if I could do that, that, that is something I could open up my mind to, yes. But, um, purpose. She just, she just wrote purpose. Talk about purpose. One, purpose is one of my words for the year. Purpose and execution are, are my two words for the year. Um, my purpose, the reason why purpose is, is my word for the year is because um, one of the things I love the most in my life is to help out other people. It's to be... Um, it doesn't matter how, how I help them out, whether it be through YouTube, whether it be through, uh, communicating with somebody directly, helping them directly, financially, emotionally, doing something to uplift somebody. That is my purpose. I've noticed that, and I picked it up a lot last year that I love to help others. I love to create a better space. For someone emotionally. So my word is purpose. And executing it is executing it through her story. It's executing it through Just Got Leo. It's executing it through uh, doing what I can to make somebody's life better. Uh, <laughs> stories about me growing up. Yo, there's too many. That one I would definitely have to think about. Um... Off of the top of my head, nigga, Jola, guys. Yep. And a bed. In high school. And my my mom, Nick Kobega Kone. Like, I would. My mom would find me in the dark at the corner of the street, standing with a boy. And then a month later, she'd find me at the park by our house, sitting on there. You know those horses that go like this? At a park. <laughs> <laughs> sitting with another boy and there was a time where she came and bit me like she creeped up behind me i'm sitting with this boy i'm like hi mm, mm, mm. like he's busy lying to me Banchella, Banchella. Can't my mom is coming behind and she's got like a like a, a, a branch from a tree with the leaves like this and whatever all i heard was just Fwah! on my back my neck Ew, my mom would bit me I'm not even lying. And I'm not even saying it in a negative way. They hear us at home. My sister knows. My mom would beat us. Make one. What do you think? There's lots of stories. I mean, there was a time my sister and I got into a fight. Your faith. I'm shabakatlapayemwe. 
<laughs> I hit her. And then uh, our dad had to break us up. It was crazy. It was crazy. But there's so many stories. Friendship. Friendship is a beautiful thing. It's the next best thing outside your immediate family. And if you love your immediate family. Actually, if not, your friends can, can be your family. If you have the right friends. If you have the right friends. They should make you better. <clears throat> they should make you a better human being. You grow with them. You learn from one another. In a good way. If you have the right friends. It's in the friends that are going to call you up on the 25th. It's in the friends that are going to just be interested in your life because they see you blowing up on social media and now they suddenly want to hang out. Bye! It's saying the toxic friends that call you up on the 25th, the ones that every time there's something or linking up or whatever, they want to link up at your house and then sleep at your house. Why are you that person? Why? It's saying the friends that you every time you go out, you're the one paying for the bill. Why? You're not a friend. So, yeah, the, fr the real friends, you grow from them, man. You, you go from girls to being women sometimes. You meet as women to women, uh, women, men. <laughs> I don't believe in men and women being friends. Really, really, really. I feel like you can be acquaintances, but good friends. Hey, this best friend, best friend with a boy. With a whole entire gua. A gua. <laughs> That's a fine. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for 15k subscribers. There will be a giveaway. Look out for that. Follow me on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, everything. I'm trying to get myself to 10,000 subscribers on Instagram. I really would like for you to follow me on there, repost my stuff, encourage people to follow me because that will help me. I feel like 10,000 is the, the one mark where things might start looking up. Okay? All right. I'm going to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.